Amen. Welcome back. <clears throat> Thank you for partaking in my in the testimony I just shared. In case you haven't watched it, please uh, listen to the testimony I just shared uh, on my journey to weight loss and uh, the Lord's doing. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, Father, we thank you for a beautiful day you have made and I pray that you will take control as we um, dive into your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I'm going to be speaking on the gift of God, that the gift of the Holy Spirit is not a ticket to heaven. That you speak in tongues is not a guarantee to heaven. That you cast out demon is not a guarantee to heaven. I mean, everybody can do that. You know, that you that you pray and fast is not a guarantee to heaven. There is one thing that guarantees you to heaven. It's not the gift. The gift can be very deceptive. So don't be deceived. I'm going to um, read a few passages in the scripture just to back this up for you to understand because a lot of people are, are, are being deceived in this end time end time that you know they spoke in tongues they like, ah i'm filled with the holy spirit you know those are the gifts the, the bible reminds us in romans chapter 11 from verse 29 it says for the gifts and the calling of god are irrevocable Verse 29 means, it says irrevocable, they are without repentance. So when God gives you that gift, it doesn't matter. Even if you backslid, that gift never goes. That's why devil had the gift of God. Remember, devil had the gift, devil had the power. You know, power is something that is being demonstrated every day in God's kingdom. Power. If you are a child of God, you must have power. Everybody, you must have power. It's something that is so common, you know. You know, the Bible says in Matthew 11, chapter, um, um, Matthew chapter 11, verse 12, until the days of John the Baptist, so before he was born, until the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffers violence. And only the violent shall take it by force. So if you don't have power, you have no business in, in God's kingdom. So the gift enables you to demonstrate power. So don't be deceived. When you see a pastor, a prophet prophesying, those things should not move you. It's just a, it's just a gift. It's just a gift. I remember sometime in the 90s, I went to a, a, a certain place. My friend um, invited me to pray for an aunt who was dying. She, you know, the doctors, she, the doctors told her she was dying. I think she had a kidney situation at that time. And my friend, we were just, you know, um, young school leavers so my friend took me there and said for me to come and pray and i went and they told me how many prophets and pastors and bishops that prayed for her nothing happened they weren't expecting anything from us you know their actions kind of told us they weren't expecting anything but i you know and uh, as a mark of respect because my friend is a family member they said, okay, whatever. My friend told them, I know this man. I've been with this man. I've worked with him. I know that God uses him. And my friend asked me, you know, to, to speak as the Lord leads me. To be honest, God didn't tell me anything because I, my spirit was weakened. The kind of reception we received, the woman was dying. They giving her expi expiring date to her life. They told her she was going to die at a certain time. So she was living on a borrowed time. You know, and at that moment, I thought it's time to activate Matthew eleven twelve, because the insult was too much. First of all, the way we were received, we were looking so poor. You know, look, I thought we 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 trekked from my house to where that place was was like forty kilometers. We trekked it. We had no money to come, but we came because of the passion. We have to demonstrate the, you know, the power of God unto salvation. On getting there, they discounted us. And I told my friend, let us share the grace. You know, my friend could feel my anger, but it was a righteous anger. It was a righteous anger. At that moment, I felt it wasn't time just to demonstrate the gift. It was time to demonstrate the fruits of the gift. Hallelujah. So... We shared the grace, and after sharing the grace, I prophesied to the woman. I said to the woman, listen, they've given you time to 
uh, leave, right? You have just few weeks to leave and you are not gonna die. I say, I told the woman, I, I, I saw you in 10 years, you're gonna be in United States of America. I say, in, in, in the next 10 years. Back then, I say, in the next 10, the woman was like, this is one thing with all these young boys. The children were shocked because none of the relatives were in the United States. I said, I saw you in the United States and I saw you taking care of your grandchildren. So I, I prophesied over this woman and I said, these things will come to pass. So start preparing to travel to United States to leave and to take care of your grandchildren. And as we were going back, they didn't offer us nothing. No prophet's offering, nothing. So we had to trek 40 kilometers back to my house. And as we were you, you know, going through all the short cuts, bush tracks to get home, my friend asked me, did the Lord speak to you about the things you told that woman? I said, no. He said, you didn't hear from the Lord? I said, no. He said, but why did you tell her she would be in the United States? There was nobody from her family that is in the United States. I said, I don't need to hear from my father before speaking the mind of my father. My friend looked at me. I said, I don't need to hear from my father before speaking his mind because I know that the characteristics of my father is all about doing good. It reminds me of what happened in John chapter 8. In John chapter 8 from verse 1, the adulterous woman, listen, the adulterous woman committed a crime. She committed a crime. She committed adultery. That was not fornication. It was adultery, meaning she was married. And the sentence was for her to be put to death. But when they brought that woman to Jesus, Jesus was on the Mount Olive in the temple there. They brought the woman and they quoted the law of Moses. They told Jesus, listen, this woman committed a crime. And this woman is subject to death because of what she committed. Jesus said, Jesus said, let he without sin be the first to cast the stone. This woman had an expiration date because she committed a crime. The same thing that happened. This woman committed no crime, but her guilt is that she had a liver, a kidney or whatever problem it was. I can't remember. It's been decades ago. And they told her she was going to die. Jesus spoke without hearing from the father because Jesus knew at that moment he occupied an office and he knows what the father would have done, being showing compassion. And it doesn't matter how they dealt with me, they treated me, they, they belittled me, but they, I, I understand that people can't place you where you belong until they discover whom you are. And I told my friend that I don't need to hear from my father before I speak his mind. I said, mark this day and see what will happen. Uh, um, I think it was a few years ago, that was in 20, um, 2018 or 19, I can't remember. I spoke with my friend and my friend said, do you remember what happened in the 90s, in 1996 or the other bar? I said, what? He said, the woman you prayed for and you prophesied, I forgot to tell you, just as you said, she was living in California. Her daughter lives in California. Her daughter is a medical doctor, an ophthalmologist. I said, how did it happen? He said, her daughter... A man, she came back and saw the daughter and said, hey, I, I, I love this woman. I got to marry this woman. And they got married. Just after your prophetic utterance, and the woman came to U.S. and completed her medical stuff, and she, they have been asking after you. And the woman asked after you, said, that young man spoke, and it come to fruition. Listen, I didn't speak. I didn't speak. I demonstrated something that was extraordinary at that time. So don't get deceived. Don't get deceived. When you see people, they prophesy to you, they tell you things, and you start wondering, oh, this person is already heaven made. No, 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 no. You are not heaven made. There is something that guarantees your authenticity in heaven. And I'm going to let you know of that. Hallelujah. Amen. There's something that guarantees you that ticket to heaven. I'm going to let you know. Not the gift. The gift is irrevocable. Everybody can dis display the gift. But what is it? Let us read. Let us read um, Matthew. There's something I want us to get from Matthew. Display of the gift. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. He says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my father. You can see what text you. He who does the will of my father. Many will say to me 
in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you, depart from me. You practice lawlessness. New King James Version says, you practice lawlessness. Lawlessness means iniquity. Jesus said you practice sin. Remember, iniquity is lawlessness. I've taught you the, 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 the differences between sin and iniquity. A lot of people have monetized this gift of God. Jesus gave you freely. Imagine if I had prayed for that woman and I monetized it and I told this woman, give me something. I did it for the love of Christ, for the compassion I have for the kingdom, to demonstrate acts of kindness. That is what led me to doing it. Imagine if I had done it and the miracle happened at that moment and they told me, wow, she's now in the United States. Oh, her daughter is there. She had grandchildren. She's living with the children. And I told them, oh, they have to sow a seed. They have to give me their first fruit. They have to do this. I can suck them dry because then I have monetized it. It's the gift. So when you see your pastor pray, people will start falling under the anointing and they make themselves demigod for you to fear them. You have the same power they have because as a child of God, Everybody have that power. It's just for you to demonstrate yours. Jesus says, only those that does the good, the, the will of the Father. Now, there is something that can make you, amen, something that can make you to inherit the kingdom, doing the will of the Father. What is the will of the Father? doing what is right. But I'm going to sum it up. It's not the gift. The gift can deceive you. The gift can lead you astray. The gift can make you to become pompous. The gift can make you to become arrogant. The gift can make you to become a thief. The gift can make you to become envious. The gift can make you to become wicked. The gift can expose you to adultery, fornication, immorality. The gift can expose you to a lot of things. But there is one thing that you need. Many people display the gift, but they lack the fruits. Many display the gift in this end time. They display the gift, but they lack the fruits. Now, what is the fruit of the Spirit? Please, go after the fruits. Enough of the gifts. Go after the fruits, because you have the gift. It's inherent in you. It's in you already. But the fruit is what is lacking. You have to go after it. Pray for it. Walk towards it. Pursue it. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 and 23. The Bible says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Many of us like this. Compassion. Love. 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 That's the fruit. Joy. When someone is promoted, celebrate. Be joyful. It is a happiness. Because happiness can be situational, but joy comes from your inside, from your belly. Peace, very important. Peace, long suffering. The Bible says, long suffering, endurance. That's what it means. Long suffering doesn't mean you're gonna suffer for long, you know, it means endurance. You have to have endurance, kindness, be kind to one another, be kind to one another. Oh, I love this, I love this. Goodness, you have to be good. You have to be good. Faithfulness. How can you be faithful to God and you are faithful to your partner and you are faithful to your spouse? It's impossible. It's, it's impossible. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Listen, child of God, you cannot be faithful to God you do not see and you are so unfaithful to one you see. Your spouse. Faithfulness. Don't cheat in business. Don't cheat in anything. Be faithful. That's what he's saying. This is the fruit. Characteristics of Jesus. Now, verse 23 says, Gentleness. Be gentle. Gentleness doesn't mean you have to be an idiot. That's not what I mean. Be gentle. <clears throat> Self-control. Woo! Self-control. That doesn't mean when you're a shopaholic like someone I know, is a sin. Hallelujah. Be, be self-control on a more serious note. Self-control. 
be contented with what you have, that's be self-control. Hallelujah. He says, against such, there is no law. Can't tie Against such, there is no law. I love Jesus. Listen, child of God, go after the gift. It is important because you have it. But pursue the fruits. Pursue the fruits. What will it profit you? You spoke in tongues. You cast out demons. And on the last day, your, your name is not in the book of life. How would it feel? How embarrassing will it look after casting out demons? After prophesying? After they call you Papa, Mama? All those stuff. And on the last day, your name is not in the book of life. Go after the fruits. Be joyful. Show love. Like Jesus showed on John chapter 8. That woman came. Jesus showed love. Stop judging people that God has placed before you to act as destiny helper. Love is a language. Even the blind can feel the presence of love. Let us go after the fruits. Be, be mindful of the prophetic ministries. They've ruined a lot of homes. They've destroyed a lot of families. They've destroyed a lot of destinies. Be mindful of prophetic homes. Be mindful. These are gifts. That's why Jesus says, I am the king of all principalities and powers. I'm the king. Or I'm their ruler. I, listen. Because he understands that the kingdom of God, power is eminent. It's necessary. But how do you use the power? That's why he would tell them in Matthew 7, 21, say, hey, depart, I do not know you. You workers of lawlessness. They never displayed. You will see somebody will start a job and for salary. The pastor will say, bring the force, bring the whole income. Bring it and test God. Are you testing God? Is God Satan? Is God a demon that you're testing God? Impact people's life. Make good use of your gifts. The only way you can make good use of your gift is when you display the spirit, the fruits of the spirit. Hallelujah. I don't know if you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior or you've gone astray and you want to make amends. Let's make these short, short prayers. If you can just place your, your left hand on your chest and lift up your right hand. Amen. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for accepting me. I thank you for coming into my heart. I thank you for taking for taking possession of everything that con consigns me. Lord Jesus, have your way in my life. Lord Jesus, be God, be Lord, be the ruler of my heart. I receive you, Jesus. Take absolutely preeminent control of my life that I may live for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. It's just very simple. Nothing else. Nothing else. And this is a guarantee ticket to heaven receiving Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. There's one more thing you have to do. Galatians chapter 5, 22-23. Display the fruits of the Spirit. Don't be judgmental. Be loving. Be kind to one another. God bless you. Until I see you next time, I remain your servant. Apostle Sir Henry Exabiro. Shalom.